Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me again. It's Monday and it's Monday afternoon actually. I've had a um, a morning running around. It's my daughter's birthday this week. So I've been out shopping for last minute birthday presents and party stuff. She's got friends coming for a sleepover. It's all going to be a bit crazy. So, so after I dropped her at school this morning, I was running around buying stuff that I needed for that. And now I am back to working on the floor address. So my plan or my goal for today is to get the corset part finished. The next thing I'm going to do is join the lining and the outside of the corset together. And I've cut two pieces of satin on the bias, which I'm going to attach. I'm about to tack them on along here. Once the outside and the lining are joined together, these will then come up out of the top seam. And they'll, so there'll be a little ridge of satin along here. Um, sequins can be quite itchy so just having that little bit of satin there just helps stop the sequins rubbing under the arms a little bit um, even though we're going to be layering stuff over the top um, it can still sequins can still rub through a little bit so by putting this on there that just helps reduce the rub for when someone's wearing it so my seam allowance is one and a half centimeters so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure and mark two centimeters down from the top so it's mainly this area where we need it to be. And I'm going to line my piece of satin up with those pins. Oh, actually, look, if I line this up at the edge, it's exactly the right width. That's useful. Because it's on the bias, I can bend it around that curve really neatly. And then I'm just going to fade it so it finishes at the side front seam. Because we don't want it to show around the front part. We don't need it there. So if I fade that there, it will start from around here once everything's together. And the same at the back. I don't want it to come right to the back. So I'll do the same the other side. Then I'm going to tack it into place so it doesn't move as I'm sewing. This is how it looks. Now they are both tacked into place. And the next thing I'm going to do is join the lining and the outsides together. And I'm going to put them right sides together, pin them, and then I'm just going to sew from the seam allowance here all the way along the top. I've marked one and a half centimetres from the end, and I'm going to stitch one and a half centimetres all the way along the top to join the outside and lining together. Now, this means that I can open it easily and understitch. So, understitching is when you open it right sides out. You put your seam allowance towards the lining and then you stitch just next to where your seam is and it holds all of the seam allowance towards the lining side. After you've understitched, it just gives a much neater edge at the top and it holds the lining towards the inside. You know, you see dresses and um, corsets and the lining sort of lumps up above the outside fabric. Understitching stops that. It's really simple to do and it just helps give a nice, really nice finish to your work. So if, if I joined the back seams and the top together, it would be really hard to get inside to do the understitching. It takes a little bit longer, but it gives your work a neater, higher quality finish. So this is the understitching. So I've stopped just there, which makes it easy to turn this back right sides together to stitch down the back. So there's my stitching all the way along. I've taken the tacking out so you can see how that line of satin stands up above the side seam there so you can see once that's oh don't do it one handed once that's together that bit sticks up there and it's this top part of the sequence that tends to really rub the underarm and then you can see how it stops before we get to that side front seam and before it gets to the center back as well so um it's not a necessary step but it is a an extra step that again helps with comfort and helps with the quality of your finish. So next I'm going to put it back right sides together and stitch down both of the centre back seams. So I've got it all in the right way and I've just pinned along the top and down the back just to hold it in place and the next job is to add the boning. I've gone into quite a lot of detail in the video about how I put the boning in and how I tip it and cut it so I'm not going to give you any extra info about that here. Um, if you'd like me to make a video about how I bone corsets using steel boning, just let me know and I'll make a separate like tutorial just about boning corsets, the different boning, metal boning you can use, um, how to cut it, how to tip it and things like that. 
So what I'm going to do here, because do you remember we the bottom of the pattern was all straight, so I actually need to curve these to get that end nice and even. And I'll trim that all off after we've sewn all the layers together. That's where I need to stop my boning all the way along. I've just marked up half a centimetre higher than the seam allowance for where I'm going to join the skirt on, just so... Because you don't want to be hitting metal boning with your machine needle because that just ends in disaster. Um, I've done it many times. It's horrible. And it makes you jump so high. So I'm going to go ahead and put all my spiral steel in and all of my straight steels in. And then I'm going to stitch it into place, just stitching through the lining layer. Once that's all in and nice and firm, I'm just going to stitch along the very bottom. Trim those corners off. And then I'm not going to eyelet it yet. So normally at this stage, if I was just making a corset, I'd also put the eyelets in after I put the boning in. But because I'm going to be putting so many embellishments on top of this, I'm actually going to do the eyeleting afterwards because I want them to go through all the layers of the, um, the tulle and the flowers and the crystals and everything we're putting on. Okay, so the corset is all together and finished. So you can see all the boning on the inside. It's all been stitched in here and I've stitched along the bottom to join the inside and outside together. And you can see that the boning's a little way up. So I've done about a centimetre here and then the skirt will actually sit a little bit higher, another half centimetre higher, which will be right near the edge of the bones. So that'll butt nicely up to there. This raw edge will be hidden between the outside and the lining of the skirt. So that's just going to stay like it is. So that's the inside and that's the outside. So yeah, really happy with how that's looking. It's come together really neatly. It looks a bit lumpy, but once it's pulled tight around a body, it'll sit a lot better. So that's me done for the night and tomorrow I will start cutting the skirt. Morning. Today I'm going to start making the skirt to go with the floral dress. So what I've done is I've got my corset on the mannequin and I've measured the length I want the front and the length I want the train um, down from the bottom of the corset, including the seam allowance for joining onto the bottom there. And I've just drawn a quick diagram showing the lengths that I need to cut, the widths that I need to cut each piece and like a rough shape of how I want to do it for filming the video uh, tutorial part of it. And then I think what I'm going to do is not make a pattern. I think what I'm going to do is cut the satin out first and then use that as my pattern to cut all my other layers. So there's going to be loads of layers for this dress. There's lining, satin, sequins, and then the tulle over the top. So I've got loads of cutting and sewing to do today. With the floral tulle layer, because it's got this lovely edge on it, the first thing I'm going to do is cut that edge off because I'm going to put that back around the bottom of the tulle layer after it's all together and hemmed. Because this is straight and the bottom of the skirt pieces are curved, it's impossible to cut it with it still on there. So what I have to do is cut that off, cut it out, and then once the skirt's the right length, so I'll hem the inside layers first, and once the skirt's the right length, I'll stitch this back onto the tulle layer and it will give that lovely embroidered scalloped edge all around the bottom of the hem and around the train. So there's a lot of work today. Um, my goal for today is to get all the layers cut out and sewn and pressed and maybe get them joined onto the corset if I don't get that far because that's a, it's a lot of work to get all four layers of skirt done. Um, if I don't get them joined on, I'll hang them up because they need to hang at least overnight before I can hem them to allow them to drop. Um, so if as long as I get them joined and hung up today, it'll be fine and then I can put them onto the dress and hem them tomorrow. I've already finished editing the vlog this morning um, I'll start that uploading at lunchtime and I refilmed the intro for this series because I wasn't happy with how the sound came out. Um, yeah, busy day already. It's almost lunchtime. Time just goes so quick at the minute. So quick. So I'm going to get the studio set up and get ready to explain what I'm doing in this bit for the part two video of making for the floral dress. All four skirt layers are together now and um, they're all sewn. I haven't pressed the satin and the sequins yet. I'll do that in the morning. The back seams on all of them are open. I will join them and put the zip in after I've joined it onto the corset. But oh my god, there's a lot of fabric. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of skirt. 
I'm going to leave them hanging there for the night so the hems can drop a bit. I just put a bit of the flower fabric over the corset just to sort of see what it looks like. It looks so gorgeous. Can't wait to get to the bit where I start pinning everything onto the corset. So I'm, I'm done for the night. I'm going to leave these hanging here and in the morning I will press them and then start attaching them to the corset. Okay, it's time to get this skirt joined onto the corset. I've pressed the seams on all of the layers now. Um, except the chill, I didn't press the chill because it's so delicate and I didn't want to squash the flowers with the iron. The seams are hanging nicely anyway, so it didn't really need it. So I'm going to take the top three layers, the satin, the sequins and the chill over to my desk and join them all together. Okay, I've got the first three layers, so the satin, the sequins and the outside layer all pinned together, ready to join and put onto the corset. This is it on my desk. There's so much fabric. This is going to be a lot of dress. Oh, look at the sparkle coming through the tulle. Oh, I'm going to get on and sew because I can't wait to see how it's all going to come together. Okay, all the layers are together and I am busting to put this on the mannequin and see how it looks. So there it is so far. I love it. So I've just laid the back together roughly so you can kind of see here. Let me come around this side. There's stuff everywhere. How the shape at the back and the train's going to look. You can see how it's joined really neatly onto the bottom of the corset. I could leave it just like this if I wanted to, but you know I'm not. Really, really happy with the overall shape. All right, so next is the zip and the back seams on the outside three layers. And then I just joined the um, lining a little bit and then I'm gonna do a bag hem of all three um, lining satin and sequin layers. I'm gonna hem them all together with a bag hem. So it's really neat. And then have the tulle as an extra layer over the top. It's about 6.30 now. I um, I popped inside to do some editing and to back up some of my footage because my memory card was full. Um, so I thought I'd just do a quick bit of editing and check all the footage was okay while I was in there. And I've edited, I've ended up editing for like three and a half hours. And um, I think I'm going to go and do some more and carry on with the skirt in the morning. Partly because I'm tired and partly because I think another night for it to hang... Um, before I hem it would be a good idea. So I'm actually going to take it off the mannequin and hang it up and then in the morning I will hem and uh, do the back seam and the zip and then I can get on with the embellishments. So I'm going to go keep editing. So the dress has been hung up all night. It's so long I couldn't quite get the train right off the floor but it should have dropped enough so I'm now going to film the end of part two which is the zip, the back seams, the hem and then reattaching that scalloped edge from the tool onto the hem of the top layer. So I'm going to get on and film that and then I'll show you when it's done. And then that'll be time to start decorating it. So here is the skirt all finished and hemmed. And I've put the um, scalloped edge back all around the hem of the tool layer as well. Uh, I was hoping to get to decorating it, but I didn't get that far. It was my daughter's birthday on Friday. I spent all Friday baking and making a cake and getting ready for a party. Uh, we had her and four school friends here straight from school on Friday for a sleepover and they left at Saturday lunchtime and it's just been bedlam. So after they left, we had to put all the furniture back because we'd moved it so they could have the sleepover. And um, then yesterday afternoon, I was exhausted because we didn't get a, a lot of sleep on Friday night. So today I've had a client this morning. Um, I'm just getting everything ready. I've got all the embellishment bits out there just to film the end of part two because I really want to get the first video up tonight. Uh, they're making the corset part. And I've finished filming the skirt one now. Yeah, so I'm off. My daughter's got a music recital in a minute. She plays the violin. Then I have to rush back to see another client um, this afternoon. So I'm not even going to get started on the embellishments today. So first thing tomorrow morning after I've dropped my daughter at school, I will start adding all the leaves and flowers and gorgeous bits and bobs and crystals um, that we got there. Um, I had a really exciting meeting this morning. Um, I've got some really cool outfits coming up that I'm making for an event here in Canberra, which I will tell you more about very, very soon. 
um yeah it's busy really busy at the minute which is really cool so i need to go and get ready and get off to see lil play her violin on stage which is good i know she gets bad stage fright so hopefully she'll be all right and um, she's playing with her ensemble today they're playing beauty and the beast so really excited to see that then back to see my client and yeah i will start filming again tomorrow so that's the end of the vlog for this week thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next week Thank you.